My name is Celestine Rowland and I am the Managing Director of Galway Business School and of Galway Cultural Institute. So with um, my husband David Nyland we founded both schools. The language school is 30 years old this year and the business school we founded in 1999. Why Ireland? Ireland in actual fact has developed its economy as a, it's a very open economy, very like Singapore. So from the point of view of multinational corporations in the tech sector, in the pharma sector, in the medical device sector, in agriculture and many other sectors, Every single multinational company is located in Ireland. Why? Because the education system is of a very high standard. We speak English, we're in the Eurozone, and now with Brexit, we're a much more attractive destination for people. And a lot of these companies happen to be American. And it's easier for them to locate in Ireland than in many other uh, European countries, for example, where the language is not a barrier. And being in the Eurocentre means that the rate of exchange doesn't matter to them. Why Galway? Galway is really a huge student centre, a very, very inclusive city, very safe, also extremely affordable for students who are international and coming to get a good quality education abroad. And I think also, because it is a much smaller city than Dublin, it means that international students can actually meet local people. I mean, uh, Galway is a big tourism centre. It has about 30 festivals per year. It's the European capital of culture in 2020. And we love visitors and we welcome people very easily. And I think it's because the uh, society in Galway is sort of lower middle class, middle class, not very posh, but very, very welcoming. And I think that's very, very important for international students to have that accessibility. Because that accessibility, after they do a language programme perhaps and a business course, means the opportunity to get a job here, a full-time job. If they do a level 8 programme with Galway Business School, they get the opportunity to stay back for one year. And many of our students are taking that route. For international students, you have a huge medical device uh, sector in Galway City, a huge tech sector, and they're always looking for students with languages, with business qualifications to work in either customer service, to work in uh, interpretation, translation, and also to train them up to work in production or to work in as product managers or as salespeople, etc. There are loads of opportunities. And if you look at the employment rates in Galway, we're almost at full employment. So the only way we can satisfy the job need in our in various sectors is through employing people from outside of Galway and outside of Ireland. There are huge numbers of companies moving from, our, from the UK to Ireland, that is a definite. And when you look at the position of Ireland, really we're halfway between, even though the distance in geography terms is smaller, but we really are in mid-Atlantic. So we're between the UK and the US in general. And our trade, we have a huge trade with the US. But if you look at when Ireland joined the EU in the 1970s, our trade was almost exclusively with the UK. But we have changed that significantly and um, we are about 40% of our trade both import and export is with the UK. A key point for students choosing Ireland or choosing Galway is the ability to meet multinational companies or local companies who are international and have internationalised and there are huge opportunities for work afterwards. I mean it's just the numbers of international people working in Galway is growing all the time and we see it from graduate students who have found jobs. They may start off with a job in, you know, it could be in a retail shop while they're studying and then they work hard and they work well and then they get promoted to manager and all of a sudden they're in a managerial, uh, what would I say, strata so that other companies are looking at their experience and expertise. We have so many students who have gone on to good jobs after graduation and it's, you know, it's very heartening that they're using their qualifications but also their experience because anybody who comes on a six-month language course or on a business degree program can work part-time and 
I suppose that's one of the big differences between Galway and Dublin. It's very affordable here, but the minimum wage is the same. So, you know, you get more bang for your euro than you would, you know, and rents are lower, the cost of living is lower, it's easier to get around, and I think that makes it a good destination for students because students in general have a budget and they need to spend it wisely. It's not just an issue of small class size, but what you can do with small classes. They get huge support from the lecturers. The lecturers themselves are experts in their field. Most of them are working in business as well, so they're lecturing here, so they bring all that experience into the classroom. And students cannot but benefit from that. They have to benefit. And then that makes them, when they go on to do masters or do uh, go straight to work, they are really, really prepared. So generally the teachers uh, who teach in, in, in the school come from a, a wide range of uh, backgrounds. They're primarily practitioners who also work as academics. So I suppose the expectation here is that every lecturer has a great deal of industry experience to be able to apply the tools and techniques and the frameworks that, that we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. In my particular case, I've worked uh, nearly 40 years in the private sector and the public sector. I've worked for multinationals, uh, I've worked in, in very, for, for various government uh, agencies and I've worked overseas for uh, non-governmental uh, organisations. And that's been, I mean, my our, our background originally was in engineering. I did an engineering degree, a master's in uh, health services management, an MBA, I'm in the middle of pursuing a PhD at the moment. So um, I would bring to the programme a wide range of public sector and private sector senior management experience based over 40 years of, quite frankly, making lots of mistakes and learning from those mistakes. I think for me, I'm very passionate about entrepreneurship. Um, I come from an entrepreneurial background myself also. I had my own medical company where we worked on software and analytics to track and monitor high-risk patients um, here in the health service within Ireland. Um, I'd be on the board with the HSC and the health service executives, so we'd be on the board to introduce electronic health, um, electronic health records. So I've done an awful lot around entrepreneurship and I also do a lot of consultancy work. Um, and through my consultancy work, I'm on a board also with um, for female entrepreneurship. So there, the, the statistics really show that um, females are that bit more um, not inclined really to step into entrepreneurship. So we have an accelerator program here within Ireland uh, where we focus on female entrepreneurship. So I'd be very passionate on entrepreneurship and also female entrepreneurship. The people who are in charge of the accreditation of business programmes for private providers like ourselves is uh, Quality and Qualifications Ireland. And they have two processes. Number one, they call it um, engagement or institutional review, which means they, you have to agree all your quality processes with them. And they have 12 quite criteria and it's a huge piece of work and every five years you re-engage with QQI to make sure that your standards are meeting the minimum requirements or exceeding it and we are in that process at the moment and for the second part of the process is to get program validation so again every five years you must have your program validated like a Bachelor of Business which we have, and then we have a Bachelor of Business with International Business. And we're currently submitting four new programmes for validation with QQI. So we hope to have, you know, it's a number of months for each process. So we hope to have uh, some decisions made by spring of next year. And also we expect our students to contribute like, to the classes. Everybody has something to say. Typically in a classroom of 20, 25 uh, people, you've hundreds of years of work experience and life experience. And our expectation would be that we collaboratively work to deliver a formative education for our, our students. And we're pretty serious about that. And we, like to we just like to make sure that 
We have a lot of one-to-one -one interaction with our students that they feel supported. For me, I think to answer your question would be, I think that um, for every entrepreneur, they, the question would be, can it be thought or are you born with entrepreneurship? Of course, there is people that it's in their DNA, they want to experience it, they have an idea, um, but also it can be thought. If we look at the tools, um, when we look at success, success always leaves clues and we look at entrepreneurship and we go through the whole business uh, methodology side of things you know how do you actually look at an idea how can you bring an idea um, to fruition basically and um, we go through the different stages in terms of the business plan and I think it's really important I, I suppose for my um, understanding and working with students that I would my objective is that they when they leave the class so we, we, we look at entrepreneurship and they have all the skills and the attributes to actually go off and look at their idea and to see whether or not their idea can scale and can be scalable in the market.